Assalamu alaikum. This lecture is regarding the aspirin overdose, which is called salicylism, and how to manage. And also, we we'll discuss the uh, paracetamol regarding its pharmacokinetic, pharmacodynamic uses, indications, contraindications, side effects, and management of the side effect of paracetamol. So, aspirin overdose, also called salicylism. This aspirin overdose include either a moderate overdose when the plasma salicylate is about 500 to 750 mg per liter and this will cause nausea, vomiting, heavy gastric discomfort, tinnitus, deafness, sweating, pyrexia, restlessness, tachycardia and hypokalemia. These are the physical signs and the symptoms uh, happens uh, in a moderate overdose of the aspirin when the concentration range between 500 to 750 milligram per deciliter. A large overdose of aspirin, it is called the salicylism, the plasma salicylate levels is above 570 milligram per liter. And this may result in pulmonary edema, convulsions, and <coughs> sometimes coma with severe dehydration and ketosis. But bleeding is unusual despite the antiplatelet effect of aspirin. So fortunately, bleeding is unusual despite the antiplatelet effect of aspirin as mentioned in the previous lectures. So adults who have taken a single large quantity usually develop a respiratory alkalosis, have to have constraint. I means, uh, I mentioned adults. Adults who have taken a single large quantity usually develop a respiratory alkalosis. Metabolic acidosis suggests severe poison. Often sometimes a mixed picture is seen or respiratory alkalosis plus metabolic acidosis. On the other hand, children, so have to have constraint, children age less than four years, they develop severe metabolic acidosis and is more likely than respiratory alkalosis. So adults develop respiratory alkalosis while children less than four years develop metabolic acidosis more likely than respiratory acid, especially if the drugs has been ingested over many hours, which is mistaken for sweet. And this is this mistake is happening in the children. <coughs> they assume this uh, aspirin is a sweet. So how treat salicylism? Treatment of salicylism. Serial measures of plasma salicylate are necessary to monitor the course of overdose and for the concentration may rise over the early hours after ingestion. And the following are relevant for salicylate overdose or measures used to <coughs> uh, prevent or to control the or to manage the salicylate overdose. First it's called activated charcoal 550 gram per hour and orally. Absorb salicylate and prevent its absorption from the alimentary tracts. Gastric lavage or the use of an emetic is no longer recommended. So the first recommendation is activated charcoal, which is a powder, 50 gram per hour. This absorbs salicylate and prevents its further absorption from the gastrointestinal tract. So what about gastric lavage? Somebody asked us or asked me about gastric lavage for the control of the salicylism. Gastric lavage or the use of an emetic agent is no longer recommended. Second way of the treatment of salicylism, correction of dehydration by using dextrose 500 5% intravenous with additional potassium is often indicated. Other measurement is the acid-based disturbance, control of the acid Based stimulus. As I mentioned, alkalosis or mixed alkalosis acidosis need to specific treatment. Metabolic acidosis is treated with sodium bicarbonate, which alkalinize the urine and accelerate the removal of salicylate in the urine. Last mode of treatment of salicylism is hemodialysis. And maybe in the if either renal failure develops or the plasma salicylate constant exceeds 900 mg per dis. So, what are the indications? of hemodialysis in patient with salicylism. The indication includes first development of renal failure, 
or when the plasma concentrations exceed 900 milligram per deciliter. All these are the measures to treat patient with salicylate, starting with activated charcoal, conduction of dehydration by dextrose, the control of the acid base disturbance, and lastly, hemodialysis. When the real fluid develops or when the plasma concentration of salicylate exceeds 900 mg per deciliter. Okay, so we finish the uh, lectures of aspirin uh, uh, and the aspirin overdose. We start with a new lectures, our new topics, which is called paracetamol and also called acetaminophen or uh, by uh, uh, trade name Panadol. <coughs> As you know, we are, or you and me, are familiar with uh, paracetamol and uh, most of them could be all of us use paracetamol in his life for relief of simple pain, especially headaches or other uh, pains. So, paracetamol, acetaminophen, mode of action. It inhibits prostaglandin synthesis in the brain, but hardly at all in the periphery. And it does not affect the platelet function. And this property uh, is different from the aspirin. As you know, aspirin affects the platelet function. Parastamol does not affect the platelet function. And it inhibits prostaglandins centrally in the brain, but hardly at all in the periphery. Aspirin has energetic efficacy equivalent to aspirin, but in therapeutic dose, it, does, it, does, it has only weak anti-inflammatory effect. A functional separation that reflects its, differen uh, its differential inhibition of enzyme responsible for prostaglandin synthesis. And this explains why it has weak anti-inflammatory effect. Well, okay, this is very clear. So, paracetamol has energetic efficacy equivalent to aspirin, but in therapeutic dose, it has only weak anti-inflammatory. Has energetic effect, but weak anti-inflammatory, and this differs from the aspirin. For this reason, some would not class paracetamol as an anti-steroidal anti-inflammatory. It's a special entity. What are the uses of paracetamol? Paracetamol is effective in mild to moderate pain, such as that of headaches or dysmenorrhea, which is mean uh, painful menstruation. So this is the first uses. Also, aspirin, also paracetamol is useful in patients who should avoid aspirin because of gastric intolerance. Any patient uh, suffering from the gastric intolerance to the aspirin can use paracetamol instead of it. Or when the patient has a bleeding tendency or allergic to paracetamol, to aspirin, can use paracetamol. Or because they are aged less than 12 years. So it cannot be given, <coughs> can, uh, uh, as you know, aspirin cannot be given to the uh, children aged less than 12 years because uh, of the development it is called Ray syndrome. It's contraindicated to give to the, to the children uh, less than 12 years. So this is indication uh, of the paracetamol, as I mentioned, a mild to moderate pain, like headache, dysmenorrhea. Also, is useful as alternative to aspirin in certain conditions when the uh, when the gastric irritation or gastric intolerance develop after use of aspirin, when there is big tendency or allergy to aspirin, or when uh, the patient aged less than 12 years. What about pharmacokinetics of paracetamol? Half-life of paracetamol is two hours. It's well absorbed from the GIT drugs, and it's inactivated <coughs> in the liver, principally by conjugations as picronine and sulfate component or substances. Minor metabolites of paracetamol are also formed of which one oxidation product is called n acetyl p benzoquinoamine, which is abbreviated by NAPKI, and is a, it's a highly reactive chemical, and this substance is normally rendered harmless by conjugation with glutathione. And this is, we'll discuss later, uh, how the side effects of how the liver damage happened due to the paracetamol. 
The supply of the part of the is limited, and if the amount of NAPQ formed is greater than the amount of glucathion available in our body, and the excess metabolite oxidized thion, which is called SH <coughs> negative, a growth of K enzyme and causing cell death. And this is explained the harmful effect of the paracetamol tolerable. <coughs> so, and this also again, this explains why a normally safe drug can an overdose give rise to hepatic and renal fibular necrosis and the kidneys also contain drug oxidizing enzyme. But when the dose of the <coughs> of this metabolite of the paracetamol exceed the normal glutathione available in the body, this will lead to the cell damage in the kidneys and the liver and this is ended with hepatic and renal uh, uh, side effect due to the parastam. What about dose of parastam? The oral dose is ranging between 500 mg to 1 gram and every 4 to 6 hour at maximum daily dose is 4 gram. What about side effect? Parastam is usually well tolerated by the stomach because Inhibition of prostaglandin synthesis in the periphery is weak, as I mentioned, the abrastomal acts centrally. Other side effect to allergic reaction and discovery sometimes occurs, but it's rare. Heavy long term daily use may be exposed to chronic renal failure. How to manage overdose of parastamol? Overdose of parastamol lead to the severe hepatocellular damage and renal tubular necrosis and both these side effects can result from taking 500 to, uh, 150 mg per kg by the way I about 10 to 20 tablet per day in one dose sorry about 10 to or 20 tablet in one dose okay this is uh, uh, called a balastamol overdose so home patient at particular risk Patient at particular risk includes those who enzymes are induced as a result of taking drugs or alcohol, their livers and kidneys form more NAPQ, those who are malnourished, especially those with chronic alcohol abuse, eating disorders, HIV infection, to the extent that their livers and kidneys are depleted of glutathione to conjugate with NAPQ. How to monitor what will pass time with overdose? First, by measurement of international normalization ratio, INR, of prothrombin time to prothrombin, uh, to the normal prothrombin time, is used to monitor liver damage. Plasma creatinine level is assessed renal impairment by, <coughs> uh, sorry, uh, assessed renal impairment rather than urea, because the urea is metabolized by the liver. So plasma creatinine is, is used to measure the real damage by parastamol while international normalization and normalization normalized ratio is used to measurement or monitors the uh, side effect of parastamol on the liver. Clinical signs first jaundice, abdominal pain, hepatic tenderness do not become apparent for 24 to 48 hours. Liver failure when it occurs at the so between two and seven days after the overdose. What are the principles for limiting a drug Absorption, we have general principles include activated charcoal, second specific principle, anastyle, cystine, not the uh, parvolates, and methionine. This is specific therapy is directed to replenish the store of liver glutathione, which conjugate with, and to diminish the amount of toxic metabolites available to harm. Thank you.